We're really excited that so many of you decided to join us on a late Friday evening for something that is really fascinating and really interesting and can simplify your life. Um, how to streamline your data science processes and so much more what you will see with GitHub Actions and Corto. And for this, um, I just want to spend some words on who's organizing these events, because it's us, Pi Ladies and R Ladies, and we are part of global communities, the Pi Ladies and the R Ladies, as the name says. Um, and we have the the, 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 the will and the, the motivation to empower women and to pr also promote gender diversity in the field of like broadly speaking data and data science programming both in Python and in R and if you want to get involved just reach out so we are four chapters who co-organized this it's Pi Ladies Munich and Pi Ladies Tunis and also R Ladies Paris and Cologne and without any further ado um, I'm handing over to our fantastic speaker, Angelika, who is guiding us through the workshop tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you this, uh, tonight. So, um, I, I would like a brief introduction. I'm Angelika. I'm currently working in Zurich in, uh, in Syncra, it's an organization mainly uh, we work in R, but also we have some projects that we develop with Python and also. So uh, using a, a lot of GitHub actions to our daily work. So what we're going to do today, we will, our goal is to set up a workflow uh, that in, uh, uses Python code and also R code in Quarto and then publish it, uh, our results or just like a brief uh, plots in Quarto using GitHub pages with Quarto. Uh, so we will talk first about CI and D. What is what is that? What are GitHub Actions? This is a brief introduction to that. Then we will do uh, an exercise, like scraping a website using Python, and then uh, doing the pushing a file. And uh, GitHub Actions will take care of that. Uh, we will see uh, some e charts uh, for R in Quarto uh, and how to publish that with GitHub Pages. And in the end, we will connect both uh, the workflows, the, the Python workflow, and also the Quarto publishing workflow. So uh, first, what is CI-CD? Uh, CI-CD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. So it's a development practice that helps to integrate code through automated tests uh, and CD uh, helps you to put in production your code. Similar to Git, uh, there is uh, are, there are multiple CI/CD platforms. Uh, just GitHub Actions is one of them. Uh, also, uh, it, that has the advantage of the that you can create your workflows, your custom CI/CD directly into your GitHub repository, and the workflows can run uh, on GitHub virtual machines or also in your uh, machines that you host yourself. But uh, the idea is that uh, they have all the infrastructure to use uh, and to make it easy your life. Also, one interesting thing about GitHub Actions are the uh, marketplace where you can find many multiple actions. So you can you don't necessarily need to know everything to create a, a, a workflow, but just you can use and take advantage of this marketplace and use these actions and just implement it or use it in your workflows. So um, let me move a little bit this. So what are the components of uh, GitHub Actions? Uh, basically, uh, we have the workflows and uh, these are mainly sequential uh, steps, we can say, or, but also we can do, uh, we can have some, some workflows running in parallel, also some workflows that are dependent on, but those workflows always have some elements that we call events, jobs, steps, actions, and runners. So, uh, but 
uh, for our workflows, the first thing that we need to start our YAML files. So on uh, GitHub Actions, use this YAML syntax to define the events. Uh, those YAML files are documents that are, uh, are stored in your GitHub repository, uh, and they should store especially in a directory or in a folder called .github slash workflows. So this is how it looks, a simple YAML file. Uh, so here we have different uh, one of different workflow using uh, two jobs, and each job has some steps. Uh, but the components, so we can see here that uh, we have the events. So we would like that uh, when everything, uh, when whenever we have a new event, then something triggers on our workflow. In this case, we have here uh, our name of the of our workflow, and then it would use the event that is called push. So whenever we push something in our repo, then the trigger of the workflow, the, the workflow will trigger. Uh, there are many uh, uh, trigger events. Uh, the most common is on push, but also we can set up on a schedule. Uh, that means that we can uh, run our flow, workflow every day at certain times or even every week. Uh, it depends on what we would like to have. Um, then our, after we have uh, declared our event, then we have the jobs. And the name of our job, in this case, we will say that uh, the name of our workflow, our job will be hello world. And uh, we will need to specify the runners. In this case, we will use uh, Ubuntu. And we, we will continue to structure our journal in this sequential uh, manner. So after we specify the runners, then we can have many steps. Uh, here we can see that we have defined three steps. One of them is uh, the checkout repo. The other one is to install R. And the other one is just to print something in the console. Uh, this individual task in, inside the job uh, will execute on the same runner that we will have specified, in this case, Ubuntu. So in this case, the, the data that they will share between uh, every steps, uh, they, they will have uh, available to know what uh, the previous steps ha ha has done. And the actions, uh, you can see here, some actions. Uh, these uh, are actions that are already set up for, to use directly in GitHub Actions. So you just uh, only include these actions in a, in a step and then uh, combine those actions, create uh, the job. Um, you can create all, of course, your own actions or uh, use the actions created by, by the community. As I said, there are many of the actions that you can find in the marketplace, uh, but also uh, uh, there are the R community actions, also the Py Python community actions. So and they are available also on GitHub, GitHub, so you only need to use it. For instance, uh, this uh, is one of the actions that is already defined uh, for the, uh, and it's widely used. So you can take advantage of this. You don't have to like go in detail of what the, uh, inside of this step the action is doing. So well, so uh, for to start, uh, we can share one of to not start from zero. We can share one of the repositories we have created for the workshop. So you can go to this one. I think. Uh, Oh, the the you can chat you can see one link in the chat probably I'm not sure. Um, so here 
for those that are not familiar, uh, in, in your repo, you always find a tab that is called actions. Uh, and these actions, uh, you will see all the uh, runner, all the trials of your workflows. And you can here specify a new workflow. Here you can choose uh, to set up a workflow yourself, but you can uh, uh, use one of the suggestions. So here we can go to set up a, a workflow yourself. And here we will see that um, the, this YAML file that I showed you before, it was created directly on the folder of .github workflows, and then it's already there. So you just need to specify uh, start to specify in this, your workflow and you can change the name. And after you have uh, commit the workflow, you can commit it here. Then you will see your workflows in the, the different workflows that you have specified in this folder. We can take a look there. So here, this is a basic uh, workflow to print hello. Uh, so every time that we push on the main branch, this workflow will trigger. Uh, and it has mainly two jobs. The first job is uh, it will print hello in Python and also it will print hello in R. Uh, the second one, it will print hello in R. Um, as I said, these actions are already defined and you can use it. Uh, to make your uh, task easy uh, or your life easier. And then um, when you commit that it will trigger your action, you can also phone this because we will build on top of that more complex workflows tonight. Uh, what we can see here is in our workflow, what happened then we have here three steps. The first step was print Python. So we set up the job. We run the action checkout. What does it mean this action checkout? This action, what it does is to take uh, the files or our repo uh, into uh, the files of our repo in the trigger of our workflow. So it will have, we will have available the documents that we will have there. Then we will have uh, the Python installation. You can also check that. Uh, we will run our Python and a script. When you go to that Python script, you will check that it only has print hello. And that's what this specific job did. So it prints hello. So it used this script and just printed hello. Then here we have again to close this is uh, this is what you can see here if we go back to our workflow of printing hello um, this uh, is this job ends with the execution of the uh, python file but of course this action takes care of closing all the environment and then it closes this uh, step so if we go back to our workflow, then we can see that these three jobs were executed in parallel. So I, I don't need uh, first to install Python and then to install R, then to install Quarto, but just, we just uh, uh, GitHub Actions just take care of that in parallel. But also if we want to do that, sequentially or dependent jobs, it's called in GitHub Actions. So what we can do is go to our workflow. Then we go to our YAML file, then we can edit it. And then we will see, we will add, oh, sorry, I'm not find it. And then we can see run, and we can see um, here we said it needs 
uh, our print. Print hello Python. Uh, job. We can commit and then pending jobs. And we can see what uh, our workflow is doing. So in this case, of course it was triggered, but you can see here that the workflow now is not run in parallel. So we will wait until this first job is executed and then we'll go to the next one. So that way we can use Whenever, whatever uh, Python file we have uh, created here, or also if we have created just a CSV file, a JSON file, and push it to our repository, then we can then uh, use this file and then use it in our next step in R. So here it looks too simple because we don't we are not using anything, right? We just like are printing the normal hello. So we can see that everything is, well, still is taking some time, but um, we can see that everything is successful. But um, like the fun starts when we start to do more complex things, right? So. So what about uh, if we have one Python file that scraped some things. Um, so we were gonna go this way. We can add, can load some files here. I can sure some files. And then I will upload this Python file. So. And we, what we have here is that we are using Beautiful Soap, uh, the library for scraping and uh, also the library for requests. And we are just uh, go to this web page. I can show it to, to you. So this is the web page that we are gonna scrape. We would like to just have some names in the, uh, of the teams. It's a very simple job actually. But what we are going to do, uh, sorry. And this one. I've made a mistake, sorry. We will go back to the tab. So, um, what's it? our Python file, we just uh, go to this web page and then just beautiful soap will take care of taking the text and then we will just uh, dump all this text file in a JSON file that we will use later in the next step. So we go here. So now our workflow we will look a little bit more complex uh, because there are some steps we will need to establish. So here we just run 
bind to the file. I can show you today uh, here. Sorry. Football the buy, I think. So here you can say, okay, I don't want to, I'm now gonna, I'm gonna, gonna run. Uh, sorry, football, I think it's the name. Football the buy. And then we can see what our workflow that we have established will do. So we can go to actions. Uh, it takes sometimes a bit of seconds to just start the workflow. And we can see that here uh, we have an error because there is not beautiful soup uh, installed in our runner that we have specified. So this is a step we need to add to our workflow. So uh, we need the, the proper environment. In this case, we need the Python installation and we will need the libraries that we have used in football. That by so we can see that we have used beautiful soup request. So that's what we need to add to our uh, workflow. So we will go again to workflows and then we will edit here. Mm -hmm. So We can run, we can add here before running our Python file. Then we can say, okay, I want to install some library. So we will use our, uh, our command to uh, make it available in the runner that we have established. So here, can commit again and we can see. I think this, uh, basically this is like kind of, uh, when you have done all the uh, steps, uh, maybe in your mind you, you said, oh, okay, yeah, I defined my job uh, and everything is done. But I think it's uh, the workflow that you see when you use make use of these GitHub actions that you uh, establish, but there are many things that you have not considered probably in your workflow. So the thing is that you can uh, check uh, what is missing, but also you can use of the many examples that are available. So here we can see that everything went well. So uh, indeed it creates, uh, it runs our Python file. But we can see that here we don't have any document, right? So in our Python file, we have created this text football.json. Uh, but the, our GitHub repo, there is not file uh, that was created. So what happened is that our, uh, sorry. This is the other action. Uh, our workflow runs the Python file, but it never uses what we have created. Like we, we need to commit our file. We need to push it to uh, to that uh, to our repo, uh, and then we can see the changes there. However, uh, to make use of this uh, commit, uh, then we can, we should create a token because we need to give permissions to Python to do that. So let me first 
you can see what I'm talking about. So, okay. Yes. Indeed, we have just run our Python file, but we would like to commit our files. Then what we are going to do is to add a new, new step that says, I want to commit our files that we will configure uh, uh, the, how the way is done. And then we will here, um, I can just, I have it in a folder there, but we can just make it available in the main route. So here we, we will add our Python file and then we commit and push. We can say step commit and then commit our changes. Then we can see that if it, it was enough uh, to execute our Python file. Uh, meanwhile, I'm not sure if there are some questions at the moment. So I can't see any question in the chat, but please don't hesitate to leave your question in the chat. Um, maybe, do uh, you think it's possible maybe to maximize a little bit your screen? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's better. Thank you. Okay. So here uh, mm -hmm. we we can see that we have made a mistake uh, when we specify the actions because uh, first I have created this uh, result of the football dot file in our uh, in in a different folder. So what we can do here is create a new file. Um, actually, we can modify in the workflow. So in this case, we don't need to move because it's the, actually the same file. So we just add to our commit. And again, it was triggered, it will take some time. Um, so I think that, uh, okay, so again, you can see that here, we have a permission denied. So that's when things, that, that, that's not a easy thing though. Okay, but why can I do here to just, um, should I add a step or what should I do? So here, basically what we should do is to give permissions uh, to our workflow to just push in our repository. Because of course, when we uh, create our repository, of course, we have permissions to commit or when we create a pull request. But in this case, uh, the this workflow or the runners, we haven't given permission to do that. So what we should do is we are going, we are gonna go to settings. Then we are gonna go to developer settings, and then we can just create personal access to. Here, uh, I have created this GitHub uh, token, this GitHub action token. And what you will do is just, just gener generate your new token. Then we can see that. And then we can say that we will give permissions to the repo. To the repo. Um, and there is also delete repo. So 
So all the permissions related to the repository we will give to permissions. Um, let me just take care here because it will generate that secret token, generate token. And then once your token is generated, you can copy your token. And then you can go back to your repository and settings. Then there's a tab that is called secrets and variables and actions. So you will go there. And then you can store new repository secret. And then you can say, okay, I will call it pad. And then we just add the token that it was created in the previous step. Let me just paste it here. And you add the secret. So, when you have done that, then you can see here that is your secret, and this uh, token will be used by the workflow to do that. So we can go back here. But uh, when we say, okay, uh, just use my token, uh, we haven't said, in any part of our file that the Python token is available to use. So we will need um, also to do that. So we are gonna, what we are gonna do is to add to our checkout step. So we will edit our YAML again. So with this action, we will, just say that we want to give permissions and we will use our secret token. So we commit again and the workflow will trigger again. It will take some time to start. And then we can see that all the steps were successful. We can check here what happened. And we can see that it was a workflow just push one new file in our repository. So here we can see that it was updated. And here we can see, or in the story of the commits, that the workflow has done that. So we have created the first part, part of our workflow. This is not called anymore print hello, but we can just give it let lib or keep the same name. So now we have just a Python file that runs and then create some file and then this file is pushed. And we can now make it available uh when we have it here we have the or our text data here and then we can use it and let's say okay maybe i will i want to continue in python so i can do that but also in this case we would like to continue using quarto and using uh, r in quarto specifically so what we will do, um, let me just go back to presentation. Just, I would like to briefly introduce some things about Quarto, about specifically publishing with Quarto. So basically there are three ways uh, uh, what you can use a GitHub Actions and publish it with Quarto. So the first thing is that you render your GitHub pages or your site that is uh, created with Quarto. You render that locally and then you push directly to the repository 
to a docs folder um, and then uh, it just like publish the web page this is like the easiest uh, way that you can do it but of course if you do that whenever you update your repository then you need to go to your quarto project and then render again and then push it so ideally you would like that uh, this content is published automatically uh, so what the second option uh, handles that you can use quarto publish command to render uh, on your local machine then you will uh, this is kind of an intermediate solution and you will have some folders that are updated and then uh, it will publish uh, your github pages however if you would like that uh, your process handles everything not only publish your your github pages but also render it so this this is like the perfect uh, way so you cannot uh, uh, be aware that every time that something changed, of course, that might happen because your code might break or something. So, but you will receive uh, uh, an email when your workflow uh, fails. But if everything goes well, then you can just like leave it like that, just uh, trigger your workflow on a schedule, and then it will do all the way, all the all the all the work for you. So it will render the files and then we'll publish. So basically uh, for the uh, first uh, approach, you will need to just change your quarto YAML, uh, add a Node.jql file, and then render your site and push it to GitHub. Uh, probably for that, I would like to show you how you can create a project with quarto. So there's one easy way to do that. So we can go here, new project, and say that, okay, in existing directory, let's say, it. So folder, quarto GitHub page. Uh, sorry, um, that didn't ask what I mean. New directory, sorry, new directory, and then you can go to Quarto website, and you can say Quarto, Quarto GitHub page. Uh, there are some options for you if you would like to create a Git repository like if you start from zero or if would, you would like to use rem for those who are uh, in the r world uh, for those who are in the python world um, there is also a possibility to use rem that is uh, 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 it recreates the environment that python needs so it's kind of the similar to rem but in python in the python world and use visual mark markdown editor and in this case we don't we don't say that we are going to use any of this. We will just use a sim more simple approach. And everything for our GitHub page with Quarto is already there. If we render, you can see that is here is our a Quarto GitHub page, and it has two tabs. So. When I said that we should change the Quarto YAML file, so here is the YAML file to the Quarto GitHub page or GitHub document. So we will need to modify this if we want to uh, use the first approach to render to our docs. This, uh, but as I mentioned, uh, the idea is that Quarto uh, for the second approach, sorry, uh, the quart quarter render and then publish with GitHub, then we need to create first a GitHub uh, pages branch. 
Then we need to modify our git ignore file. Uh, we use the quarto publish GitHub pages command, and then we add our workflow, uh, the job to render and publish our quarto GitHub page. So uh, what, how are we going to do that? Then here, I think it's, uh, you can find it already created. You can find here that there's a GitHub pages branch, but you only uh, can just create the branch. And the important thing here is that you can go to settings and then we do, you will go to pages. In this, you will need to specify that you would like to use this GitHub pages branch. And this is what uh, GitHub actions will use uh, to publish your web page. So once this setup is done, then you can Go again to your um, part file. Let me hear. Then you can, you need also to specify uh, in the git ignore file uh, that you don't want to use. Let me just show you this here. Angelica, would it be possible yep. to make it the uh, font a bit bigger? Ah, yes, sure. I think if you hit Command and Plus, it should, if you can zoom in. No, I think it doesn't work with my, just like, I always make it smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that now other people know how to do how to make it bigger too <laughs> <laughs> and that's the good part okay i hope that i think now it's better right seems great okay so i can show you here this, sorry here it's already set up so what it say i told you before is that you need to uh, and you get ignore you need to add these two commands. And then uh, uh, you can uh, push this document. Oh, sorry, that's there. And when would you, you have rendered your document, you have rendered your uh, GitHub pages, then you should use in your terminal GitHub Quarto. And then get a uh, quarto publish and GitHub pages. Then a bunch of files are created. And then you will commit those to your Git file, to your Git repository. But of course, uh, remember that it's really important that you add this uh, to the Git ignore. Otherwise, it might create some conflict there. And also, we will need to add our publish uh, YAML file to take care of our job. So basically where we do this, uh, as I mentioned, these uh, actions are already created. So you will need to set up Quarto, install R, then some, uh, you need to add some dependencies. Um, there are two ways of doing that. Like you can add here, listedly that you can say, okay, uh, I need these packages, but also you can use uh, rent environments or bend environments in the case of Python. And then you can uh, render and publish your, your website. Uh, one of the important things here is that every time you need or you use a different package in your library, so you need to specify it. So for instance here, so here I will change this using this uh, Quarto file. So what I will do is that uh, I will just read from JSON file. Here I can just change the path. Sorry that I didn't do that. And then uh, this will render uh, our new page. 
I can render this and show you to you. Mm. Well, it was open in a different poster. Yeah, probably. Okay, let me check. It was open in my browser. Okay. So here is the local render. You can see here that is the local render of my of my web page. Uh, just I just did some bar charts. Uh, some what I did was just take the text that the JSON file that you saw in Python, and then you here I say like, okay, I feel more comfortable. Maybe handle this text, this long text in R. So what I will do is just like uh, I will extract some themes, and then I will do some word clouds, some scraps, and then I will put it in Quart. After you modify this, then you can uh, use the workflow, of course. Then you can first use the workflow that you have created uh, using your JSON file and then add with the dependent jobs. Um, I can show you here. You can go to a different repository. So here I have changed already and pushed already my changes uh, to my quarto document. So here you can find what we have just seen. And we can take a look how it looks the new workflow. So as I mentioned before, here we can just check the same Python file. The only main difference is that I just uh, have a folder with the Python files and then just uh, use these Python files there and push also the JSON file that is produced in this Python folder. And after that, um, I just publish our Quarto document. One important here when we go to actions is that this is, uh, as I mentioned before, it was executed uh, in parallel. But let's say that our JSON file is updated. In this case, uh, if our JSON file is updated and it just run in parallel, then probably it will take a, a different version of our file. So what we need is to, again, specify that it will be a dependent job. So we can see here. Uh, needs. Our hello Python that is not only printing hello, but also storing some files. That's also a good thing about GitHub Actions that when you are writing your, uh, your YAML file, it also gives you uh, some suggestions. So here I made a typo, so also it helps you with that. So dependent render and publish. Of course, you can do, you don't have to edit this in GitHub. You can also use Armor uh, Art Studio, Visual Studio Code to do this. And then you can see that here. Now our JSON Python will be first executed and then we can use this uh, to render our website. When you go to settings, uh, you can also see the page. If you don't remember what's the page. Then... And here you can see that it's not 
here was local, but now here it was rendered properly. Our document. And an interesting thing of this workflow is that you can combine in, of course, different ways. You can first can have some R uh, steps here, also handle with that, push your files, and then you can use Quarto with Python. So you can change. Uh, to me, it was easy just to, because I'm more used to do these kind of things in Python, like just to use the beautiful soup library because I think it's, it's easier for me and then just make all things in, in, in R. But of course you can do the other way around or you can even uh, use some steps in Python and uh, after that in R and also why not to just use Julia with Quarto. So it's, it's really depending on uh what you would like to develop mm -hmm. um, i hope that uh there are some steps in between that are not so uh, easy uh that is not just a command but it's just like did you follow these steps then you will have uh all things done not sure if there are some questions by now. Yes, there is one question here. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked uh, that, uh, is it possible to have some sort of uh, interface that helps to generate the EML files? Uh, no, actually, well, uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, I just, um know the marketplace i can show you the marketplace it really it really helps you um to use the actions so here you can see actions so it really has many and some of them are good with the this is what i was about to write because normally if you are interested in some action right you can go there and there are some like examples how you start using exactly action. Uh, so here for me, instance yeah you can also just copy what uh angelica is already doing and do your own chains uh replace exactly. the script for your script um yeah and more information from your side exactly so here you can just like clone this if you would like to just make the use of this workflow you can already do that just uh, you want to you need to set up your token, uh, but also there I can show you maybe the one that I'm more familiar with our lib. So these are the our lib actions for the our community. So here you can see that there are many. If you want to do some tiny tech things, some pandas, if you want to use RM for your project, then you can see here how you can use it, how can you specify this. Uh, and you, it's really like a, a recipe that you copy uh, one step from here, one step one uh, step from there. Uh, and here you can see like all the errors, some of them might, I think I would say that the complicated errors are errors that are not related specifically with the workflow, but just like, to set up, like uh, for instance, the new branch. If you don't set up properly uh, this GitHub pages branch, of course you will have an error. Uh, so uh, maybe those are the, the tiny details that you uh, that make cause uh, that, that cause trouble sometimes. But other than that, for instance, this workflow is already working. So as uh, Uh, I don't know who, who talked that, but who said that, but uh, yeah, you can use it and then just start uh, combining Python and R with Quart. There was another question here, uh, whether it's possible to trigger the workflow automatically on a schedule. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, as I mentioned here, 
when you say, uh, here is the event that will trigger. So here, every time I, I make a new push in my repository, the, this workflow will trigger, but you can specify uh, only uh, on a schedule. So what you will do, I can show you some actions here, for instance. Um, so this uh, action is triggered on push and also on a schedule. So every day, two times a day, it, it will trigger. Uh, and also this option, workflow dispatch, uh, it's, it gives the possibility to execute it manually. For instance, if you say like, okay, I don't want to wait until the second run, then you can go uh, to this workflow and then you can run like trigger manually. Uh, this workflow dispatch uh, gives yeah, you that possibility. very useful, right? Because uh, you can always test if your workflow is uh, working. Because for example, for me, I did it like every Tuesday, but it was still Monday. So I wanted to see what is the output. And then I put this on uh, dispatch and click mm -hmm. there. So exactly. it's really nice you can combine all this, right? Yeah, exactly. Also, like there are many possibilities. I just show you the more common ones, but yeah, definitely there are a lot. I think here I push to the list. There are like definitely a lot of possibilities. Trigger. Well, on this caution, comments, on fork, well, definitely it, it can do many, many things. Also, when uh, a new pull request is created, maybe you have seen already that, that some of the repositories for our packages, when you create a new pull request, they automate it, create some guidelines. Okay, you check that, you check that. Of course, this, uh, this is handled by a workflow. So every time, for instance, a, a pull request is created, you also can trigger one workflow. So definitely it's uh, the possibilities for trigger a workflow are quite huge. I think this answer, thank you. Okay. I think that was what I wanted to show you today. Of course, you can uh, clone this. Uh, you make use of the quarto project of the uh, of the workflow that use it, and also change it and play it a little bit around. Uh, as I said, uh, it's important to specify the dependencies. I'm not sure if I already show you that, uh, but when we include the new libraries, we need to set it like the Set up the dependencies for R. Also, if we like to do it the other way around, we need to specify the Python dependencies. So it's really important that you do that because it's kind of a clean environment that, it, that uh, in this environment and in this runner, Python will be installed and then all the dependencies will be installed. So that's why you need to do these steps every time the workflow is run. Of course, there are some uh, actions that make uh, some things easier. For instance, you can also use some containers. So that those are have already installed R and then the, some dependencies. So that uh, uh, might uh, make it shorter the time that the actions uh, is executed because yeah, it depends on, you can see here that how, how, how much time each action takes. That's so cool. And uh, just a quick last question that came up in the chat. I think it's also referring to some of the Twitter people who wrote like, I got a GitHub um, bill saying that I should pay them now. Like, I don't know, like how much money for GitHub actions. Mm -hmm. Do you know like what the limits are? Is it fully for free or is there anything that I as a user have to take care of? Yeah, I think there is limit. Uh of that i think it depends of uh all the things that 
ask you how how frequent you do that but of course uh, if they didn't have enough uh, time to execute then it says okay you need to update your account or you need to uh but the action will will tell you like okay we will need you will need to do some action not to pay more it specifically does say pay more but oh, that's good to know that's great and i think just for playing around it should be good right mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah, there's I this free tier that you can go for and yeah mm -hmm. exactly and also i, I think the uh, cool issue a cool feature is the github pages also is for free so you can also play around to how you want to like to publish also like you can be very creative here also you can un not only publish uh, github pages of course but you can also publish just quarto documents so it, it depends that's so cool and you can also like i mean with these websites you can also set up your personal portfolio and kind of market exactly yourself. exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so cool so we got everything like in just just one run right like yeah. from getting the data or whatever you want um like making some beautiful visualizations to how do you publish it all in a all in a quick run that was mm -hmm. <laughs> that was great <laughs> and i think the the only the like that there are only so few questions in the chat is because you explained everything so intuitively and so nicely yeah i i i think it's nice to see that it's kind of a recipe that you need you don't need to uh, like really go into detail what is uh, this action is doing but just like to know like okay i need to make the, uh, available all my, my files i need to run i need like kind of think in this workflow pipeline and once you have that then it's like you can start to uh, maybe look into the marketplace or just like type like action to do this and then you can use it i think that's something really useful in github actions uh the, to be honest for the other ones uh, for the other services it's not that simple uh so you will need to uh, really to specify the uh, all steps uh for instance for the uh our library you need to make it more detailed because but in github actions just this step just make them makes the magic for you so that's a good feature about github actions i have a question for uh, your experience uh, with python and r which are the um, kind of actions that you always gonna use when you are using r or when you are using python that in any case you have to have this uh, actions to set up you always need to uh, the installation and the dependencies. Those are the actions that for sure you really need to have. So install and the dependencies are uh, independent of if you have the dependencies explicit in your workflow or if you use uh, some environment in your project, you still need to specify that you would like to use this environment in your project in your workflow. So definitely it's something that uh, those two things that you need to to really make use uh and also of course the the basic ones of the uh, uh how to use the repo and thank you and how to push things there mm -hmm. so with that being said i think it's like wonderful last words of the talk um, I think we can we can close it and say a big thank you. And it was also already in the chat. I think you, you probably didn't see it, but there were so many people saying like, thank you. That was wonderful walkthrough and I can only agree to that. Um, so thanks a lot for joining us, everyone. Thanks so much for making this event such a smooth walkthrough. It was really great having you all here.